Hi, and welcome to Spectrum. I'm Ruth. And I'm Brenton. Looking forward to a great time together. Ruth, we've got some wonderful interviews as we're coming up on the close of the year. Who are we going to start off with today? Some fun things happening. We're going to start off with our friend Christina Daly, and she's with Sparrow Dance Productions. They've got a neat production coming up that's uh, Christmas focused. And we also have Sonia Warwick, who's the communications director for the Roadrunner Food Bank and giving some great information as we're coming to the close of the year. Stay with us. privilege to have with us today Christina Daly who is with Sparrow Dance Productions and uh, this is based out of the Rio Rancho area. It has been a while uh, Christina but welcome back to Spectrum. Thank you so much for having me back. We're looking forward to just hearing about some of the wonderful things that you are involved with. Of course your uh, location and your dance studio is based in Rio Rancho yes. and we sometimes get to share with friends from the Rio Rancho area in addition to Albuquerque and other places. So this will be kind of fun for us but tell us a little bit. It's probably been a year or more since you've been here. What is new at Sparrow Dance Productions since we saw you last? Well, we are, since we saw you last, I have produced four ballets in the last wow. couple of years. Uh, and the next upcoming one is actually next weekend. We're doing the Nutcracker and the Land of the Sweets Trading Company at Rio Rancho High School Performing Arts Center. And we are an all-inclusive company and pre-professional conservatory of dance. So we have, we have dancers from all over the city, all over the town and all different abilities and different ages or they all ages are they all middle school high school elementary? we have every, our youngest dancer is seven and our oldest dancer i will protect their integrity okay <laughs> they're older than seven we'll leave yeah. it at that okay so as you get ready for uh the nutcracker and uh, the other portions of that presentation is it uh, something that, how many people are in something like that? Is that a, a so big So this deal? year, yeah, this year our cast is uh, 59 dancers all That's together. And that includes our paid professional company, our pre-professional adult company, and our pre-professional company of the kids, and that's what we call our conservatory cadets, because they're pretty hardcore. <laughs> they're they're, they're pretty really hard. committed to their ballet education. Okay. And uh, as they move through this uh, presentation, how long is the, the presentation that they do for Christmas? So this will be a two-act, two-hour ballet with an intermission. Wow. It's the full production of The Nutcracker, and um, it's a holiday favorite. We are really honored to be able to produce a nutcracker for the community of Rio Rancho because it helps us to invest into our schools and it helps to keep our tax dollars in our city mm -hmm. and it exposes our community to a fine art um, and our Rio Rancho neighbors don't have to leave Rio Rancho to go to Albuquerque or Santa Fe. They can, of course. Sure. There's no competition. Um, but it might be nice to for families to have something in their well, own well, backyard. Well, absolutely. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think that is an, an interesting thing because we do interview people from all over. But one of the mm -hmm. special things about realizing that we have some wonderful communities all around uh, Albuquerque, and they're doing some special things too, whether it's oh, Rio yeah. Rancho or maybe it's a little further to the south, like uh, Las Lunas or Berlin. So there's all sorts of great communities involved in different sections. Now, I know that COVID was pretty, you know, that was pretty taxing on a lot of folks. And over the last couple of years, how has that played out for you? I mean, emotionally, physically, what sure. kind of things have you personally in, in, encountered sure. during that season? Well, I think we enc we encountered some pretty large obstacles. A lot um, of people did. Yes, I think I think though the focus for us really was relying on the Lord and his faithfulness and it was a faith growing opportunity and when the world stopped including our businesses shutting down it was like, "All right, Lord, where's the lesson here?" and 
It was a huge lesson for us in faith and in tithing and be, staying obedience and staying in obedience and really, really committing to what we felt God was leading us in, in our mm -hmm. prayer life and everything and not getting swept up in the chaos of it all. Did you feel like, <clears throat> Christina, that there were some, you know, as a business owner and mm -hmm. operator, that it was, you know, mentally exhausting going through yes. COVID. I was talking to someone, in fact, my wife uh, earlier, and we were just talking about how much the world was impacted mm -hmm. by COVID. You know, to this day, mm -hmm. that has been a shaping event. How did you feel that that impacted you? Did, did you experience that same kind of stress? Owning and running a business, a small business, isn't an easy thing. Right. It's not easy anyway. Um, I think there have been different moments in the last couple of years and in COVID, and it's it was like, you know, Running a business is hard. Sure. Running a business with bills. a pandemic is hard. Um, and at some point it's kind of like, okay, this is hard, but what, what are other options are we going to have? And really, if you're going to talk the talk, we needed to walk the walk in faith and it paid off. I mean, God showed Praise up God. every time. And as soon as, um, you know, th shortly after that, we have faced some other challenges in our personal life, but, um, we still just keep keep showing up. I think that, that's I think the biggest yeah I think the biggest act of faith sometimes is getting out of bed and just showing up. You know, it's not. It's not. I think you've hit on a, on a real key. It's not easy to 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 you know walk it out every day, and it's mm -hmm. a it's a choice. You know, there is. is a choice if I'm going to get up. There is a choice if I'm going to make it happen today. Uh, if you're working with, like in your case, 59 dancers mm -hmm. and their parents and extended family, hey, that's a choice to get out there and to make it happen. But the only way that anything good happens is by being committed and staying after it. So I really commend you for that. Well, tell us a little bit about, you know, what's the next big thing for Sparrow Dance Productions? We're talking about Christmas, but Christmas is going to be here and Any be minute. gone before we know <laughs> right. it. What's next? What happens after that? So we have our Nutcracker production next weekend or this coming weekend on December 9th and 10th. And we have two shows each day, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Okay. Um, and then after that, we are gearing up to get ready for our spring production and we'll hold auditions for that one. And uh, we have not announced that yet. Okay. We are going to announce that after our Nutcracker production. All right, so it's still a secret. Yeah, it's still a secret. But it's something coming in the spring. It is something coming in the spring, yes. Okay. Well, that kind of gives you just a, a tease that there's, there's this isn't, uh, it's not just a Christmas thing once a year. You have other projects that are going to Oh, yes. We have several learn. productions throughout the year. Okay. And, and that, that's, that's wonderful. Uh, as, as people are, are thinking a little bit about that, you know, tell us a little bit about the dance community in Rio Rancho. You sure. Because, you, you know, that's a, that's a, a unique uh, group of folks. What is that all about? What does it feel like to be a part of a dance community in your, in your city? Yeah. So I'd love to talk about that. Um, the, so Sparrow Dance Productions is the only dance business that is, has classical classes. That's a conservatory, a company that's doing productions in Rio Rancho. Okay. We are the largest arts organization in Rio Rancho. Wow. And um, it's been really awesome to become that staple to really grow into that and to be able to have the opportunity to be a business owner so we're not a we are not a 501c3 we are an llc for for charity uh, organization okay and so the way that our pricing is and the way that we can do work study or scholarship our dancers really matches the economical situations and dynamics in our city. And when I was growing up, I did not always have the chance to afford dance. And I just don't believe in my heart that, you know, ballet is for the elite. It, dance really is for everyone okay. and everybody. So you have and mechanisms to help people we in cases do. like that? Yes, we do. And so we really, we really love more than, more than Sparrow being in the community, yes. The community is also in Sparrow because we have a culture that's built off of family dynamics and support, understanding. Um, we really don't have tolerance for the gossip that's often found in show business and just other kind of other 
qualities that can be perceived in show business. So, so let's, you know, as we, as we end today, sure. I, 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 you know, sense that you were a person of faith and uh, oh, yes. <laughs> as, as you think about, you know, your business and being a, a, a person who's a Christian and, and uh, living out your faith every day, how have you dealt with the trials? You know, because right. life is not always smooth and easy. Not at all. How have you tried to uh, integrate faith in, inside of your business as a business owner? Sure. So I make a choice to heal out loud. And I think that not everybody feels brave enough, and I don't feel brave enough, but I go for it anyway, to let your vulnerable side show be open about some of the stuff that you're going through and not in a way where you're crossing boundaries. But, um, for example, my clients know that I have a brain injury now that happened a couple of years ago. Um, I have some PTSD, some anxiety, and that's actually made me more human and I can connect better. And God has really used that. Mm. And when I list off things that I've been through, it's really not about all of these hardships. It's really about standing up and saying, as a Christian, I get to live the story of the resurrection every day. It's not just a one-time event that happened thousands of years ago. Jesus really does show up and he really on an ongoing basis. On an ongoing basis. And well, he's resurrected wanna, every circumstance for me. I don't want to miss out on promoting one more time sure. when you're going to be getting together for your Nutcracker presentation. So tell us one more time. Well, sure. So one more time this weekend. Saturday, December 9th, and Sunday, December 10th. There is a 2 p.m. and a 7 p.m. show on both days. All right. And you can give us a call at our studio, and we will be there to answer your call and get you some tickets. Thank you. Christina Daly uh, sharing with us from Sparrow Dance Productions in Rio Rancho. Appreciate the update. Thank you. Watch the Daystar Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.5. Today, as we are coming up on the last month of 2023, I want to give you an update. Back in the summer, Ruth, we were talking to our friends all across uh, our viewing area about the importance of raising $20,000, which would help us with just some uh, unexpected expenses and also some uh, you know, equipment issues that we were having that we needed to take care of and repair. And we have been able to raise a lot of that money, but not all of it. We've raised about 13000 probably between thirteen and 14000 right now as we stand. And we have about another month to raise that last six thousand sixty-five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. We need uh, the uh, folks to give that hundred-dollar donation one time. If you can give a larger donation, uh, maybe two hundred, two fifty, five hundred dollars, it could really help us to close the distance. It's really becoming critical before we finish the year because now the bills are due and they have to be pay taken care of and paid for. And we really need your help. And we want to end the year strong. So if you would like to donate, the easiest way to do that is to connect with us on the internet at kazq32.org to give safely online. Of course, if you'd like to speak to someone, you can do that. 505-884-8355. Extension 101 is the number you would call. Or if you have that donation in hand along with a prayer request, or maybe you have moved and you have a new address, we need to update those addresses so that we can get the giving donations to you in a timely yes. manner. You can do that to 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast, Albuquerque, New Mexico, 87109. I just want to share with you that everybody working together is making a difference. We've seen some yes. tremendous growth yes. with our uh, viewership as we have been working on that over the course of the last several months. It's grown from about 40,000 people a month to over 100,000 viewers. And that's according to uh, one of the groups who measures uh, those things. Really exciting stuff. And I was just seeing a lot more people just talking to me about you know, seeing things on TV. And it really is a blessing. So do your part together. We're going to have an impact. Watch Jimmy Swagger and the Sun Life Network 24 hours a day on KAZQ 32.3. We are privileged to have with us today Sonia Warwick, the Director of Communication and Events from Roadrunner Food Bank. And uh, looking forward to some updates. Sonia, it's good to have you back with us. Oh my goodness, thank you always for having us on and taking the time to get updates on the food bank. I sure appreciate it. Absolutely. We're mm -hmm. thankful to be able to do that. You know, this time of year, as we move into the holiday season, mm -hmm. holiday stretch, I think a lot of folks are thinking a little bit more about helping others and 
or finding help themselves. Yeah. Why don't you give us uh, just an encapsulation of what the food bank's all about? It's, it's different than a food pantry, isn't it? Absolutely. So Roadrunner Food Bank, we are a distribution facility. And so we take in food from a lot of different locations, primarily food industry partners. And that can be anything from a food manufacturer to growers that we have relationships with, both here in New Mexico or regionally and even nationally through some national relationships that we have. And all that food comes comes back to the food bank or comes to the food bank where we then um, basically dole that out, if you will, to mm -hmm. a network of statewide partners. And these network, uh, this statewide network of partners is made up from anything like um, a typical food pantry to right. soup kitchens, group homes. Um, we also have relationships with schools that we um, provide food to How do about distribution there. Do you give the individuals, or is that more of a food pantry? It's thing? more of a food pantry like situation. Now, there are times where, you know, obviously we did some direct distribution during the pandemic where we were the, the agency handling that for our, because of the increased need. Um, but by and large, most of what we're doing is going out into a community location to that location, then gets handed out to people who are struggling with hunger. So, would we think of, because we sometimes we'll see your big uh, tra tractor trailers going through town. Yeah. Do we think of you kind of as like the, uh, I don't know, the warehouse? Absolutely. Hub for That's helping. That's a great way to think about okay. it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, that, yeah. that would be a, a good connecting point. Well, in th this season of time yeah. where we are seeing a lot more inflation, and, yes. and, and you know, I just continue to hear of people who are trying to pinch their pennies. <laughs> There's a, a term that has been thrown around called a meal gap. Yeah. Um, what does that mean? Give, give us some more definition of what does it mean to have a meal gap in, the, in like a state like New Mexico? Of course. So the meal gap, as it implies, is it's a shortfall of how many meals um, that a community or an area might be facing uh, in terms of the people in poverty and how much food is out there to be able to be distributed, not just by us, but through other programs as well. Um, and in our state, you know, we tend to have a higher meal gap than other places in the nation simply because we have high poverty rates. So our meal gap is pretty significant. Um, you know, with one in five children experiencing hunger and one in seven people overall, that meal gap really has been growing throughout the course of really 2023, as we've seen to your point, you know, higher costs for things like basic access to food, for example, and also because we've seen some rollback of some um, federal programs that help put meals on the table for people in need. And, and, is, and of course, who knows what the future holds? None of us do. No. Yeah. But one of the things that we're seeing is, you know, as, as the government is running bigger and bigger deficits, how much will they be able to continue distributing directly to people? I think that's one of the reasons we're seeing some of the programs that maybe were there during COVID disappear. Absolutely. There's just... There's just not as much resource available. Now, here's another question I have. We certainly think about poverty, okay? Mm -hmm. And we think, sure. well, you know, that's for somebody else. But I'm hearing of people that are more middle class that, yeah. you know, in mm -hmm. terms of maybe mom and dad both have a job or or at least, you know, if it's a single family uh, income person, maybe they have a, a pretty decent job. Yes. I read about some things over the weekend, but they're having trouble putting food on the table. They are. And yes. Is, does that fit into the meal gap oh, as well? Or do you just have to be in the, no, in the no, poverty no. Absolutely. definition? Absolutely. You can be working and definitely be in poverty. You can definitely have a job and be in poverty. And for us, the meal gap is that, is really is a representation of how many meals are missing out of, you know, the plates of people who are struggling and making tough decisions to put food on the table. Sad to see that we're in a spot where it seems like that conversation is more frequent to me. Absolutely. I mean, I, I just continue yeah. running into people who are, are having that yeah. type of dif difficulty. I would agree. <laughs> yeah. Do, do you see that firsthand? I mean, uh, well, you... of course. You know, when I'm attending distributions, whether those are um, from locations that we're providing food to, or even, you know, most recently we did some expanded uh, um Thanksgiving distributions, for example, right. out in the community to help our network because they were overwhelmed. Um, and most definitely, you hear of people who are in food lines who haven't been there in a long time. <laughs> Let, let's kind of help people understand how it works. Yeah. You get this food from these larger groups, all right? Now there's somebody in... And what's the basis area that you serve? Let's let's define okay, that. Okay, sure. Do you, Would be is happy it Central to New Mexico that. only Albuquerque? How does that work? 
Yeah, so our um, territory, if you will, oh, you of go. coverage <laughs> is really Bernalillo County and almost everything south of that. So of the 33 counties in the state of New Mexico, Roadrunner Food Bank provides direct service to that network I described in 16 counties. And the remaining 17, uh, we also warehouse food for some of those smaller regional food banks that cover the remaining 17 counties in the state. Okay, so you have the, the majority of the, the northern part of the state. Or southern part of the mid, state, mid and south, mid yeah, and south, <laughs> and then you might supply supplemental help to some of those in the yes, north. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so you then are pushing out food to all these different groups and all these different yeah. quarters. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten to the point that you've needed big help? Have you had any donors step up that have made some significant? You know, I think this year's been. Yeah, this year, sorry about that, has definitely been unusual. Our poundage has been way down from the previous mm. year. And I think a lot of that is, you know, we were getting some influx of food from um, some federal programs that were helping meet that need during the pandemic. And that a lot has completely been expended and, you know, it's now not a program that's happening. And so it's meant that we've kind of returned, at least in poundage terms, mm. to what we were distributing before the pandemic. Okay. But the need is very much elevated. The so need is not returned to what we saw even three or four years ago. Why well, you just you just wonder how that's going to play out? You know, I, we and none of again none of us know. I mean, I, I'm hopeful that things can yeah. come roaring back and that you know financial situations uh, abate and that we see people able to yes. take care of things. But it just seems like even going to the grocery store. The average person just costs a lot more than than it used to. Now, I understand that there's a, a matching gift of some food uh, opportunities. You had some people step up and say, hey, we'll help you a little bit. Yeah, we've had three donors who have come together um, and really said, you know, during the month of December, we're going to provide a matching gift. Um, to the food bank. And really what that means is that's that challenge match that allows, you know, a contributor out in the community to have their gift really have almost double the impact. So, that you matters. know, exactly. So if you're making, you know, a $25 gift, uh, those three partners are allowing us to make that a $50 contribution. And Praise God for that. Yeah, absolutely. We're so grateful that they're doing this. And it's a great way, you know, as we end the year um, for us to prepare and look forward to what 2024 is going to have and prepare for for that time. Now, the way that people can <laughs> donate to help in that way is uh, through a website, is that correct? Absolutely. The easiest way to give is, is right online through our website at rrfb.org. So the initials for Roadrunner Food Bank. Um, we'll have a story up on, on the main page of our website and that will you can click that button and it'll get your contribution matched. Okay. So uh, what a blessing that would be to uh, double your, your impact with your gift. That's a big deal and really makes a difference. What are some other ways that people can get involved? I, I hear from time to time, you know, would you like to help out in you know, different food programs? Mm -hmm. Can people do different things or can they, do you need actual volunteerism? Always volunteers are needed. And this time of year, we tend to have more volunteer help. But, you know, as you're thinking about ways to give back in the new year, it's a great opportunity to come and spend a few hours in our warehouse helping us prep food that's eventually going to wind up on our semis and leaving for a community. Um, but we also do direct some direct distributions um, in rural and high need communities. So we're doing distributions um, primarily in indigenous communities, for example, and we can always use some volunteer help there. So if you have an interest in doing that, some of them are close by, some of them are a few hours or away. You, you've mentioned that, you know, the, the need is definitely up. Is, is the volunteerism returning to pre-COVID uh, levels or yeah. is it still suppressed? Yeah, you know, I, it feels that way. I see more um, faces in the warehouse, most Good. definitely. And, you know, I think our volunteer hours um, and for the last at least year and a half have been higher, which is fantastic. But, you know, there's always definitely um, a spot you can fill and coming and helping in our warehouse for sure. Well, that's good news all the way around. Okay, remember that you can make a matching gift to help uh, with really this meal shortage that's yeah. out there, this, this meal gap. And you can go online to uh, rrfb, roadrunnerfoodbank.org. And then there's going to be a section where you can look for the match and click there and make your donation. And that, that will work. Sonia, thank you so much for coming and sharing with us. It's been great to catch up on this information. Thank you so much for the opportunity. We definitely appreciate the time and um, educating your audience about what we're up to. Thank you.
course of uh, this month, we've been talking about a lot of wonderful opportunities that you can get involved with uh, for Christmas time. But we want to invite you to join with us for our Christmas musical and uh, drama. It's going to be really good. It's coming up on the weekend of the 15th and the 17th of December at mm -hmm. Evangel Christian Center, 15th, 7 o'clock, two presentations on uh, the 17th. And that will be at 9 and 11. Right. And so we would encourage you to come out. I, I don't know how many is in the cast, but there's a big group. We have a large group in the cast, and it is a free event open to anyone. So yes. if you do something at Christmas time special with your family, we invite you to come and be with us on those two evenings. It's going to be really good. And I've been inviting people and so, uh, you know, and encouraging others to invite people. So I, I would just in, uh, remind you that that's coming up the 15th, 7 o'clock, 17th. Uh, two occasions, 9 and 11 a.m. Evangel Christian Center located at 4501 Montgomery Boulevard Northeast. And that is a Christmas musical and drama. And it's going to be really good. Mm -hmm. you, you will enjoy it. So excited about that and excited about the wonderful things God has in store. Christmas Eve, we have one service at 10 a.m. here at Evangel. Yes. We're looking forward to packing the place out on Christmas Eve morning at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a communion service. It's going to be a lot of special music again. There's going to be some wonderful things that we're going to be doing uh, video-wise. And just you're going to enjoy it. You do not want to miss out on Christmas Eve. December is such a wonderful time of year great time of year to focus on the true meaning of Christmas Yes. instead of being overwhelmed by the shopping and the decorating and all of the things that we get, the cooking that we get caught up in. And just to, fo I've, I found myself even driving in today talking to you and I was like, you know what, I'm, I need to make sure that I keep Jesus the center of what's happening in December because it can easily become about other things. And one of the things that I have been um, wanting to do, or not convicted, but mm, impressed upon to do, is read through the book of Luke this mm -hmm. month of December. So you know exactly what the Christmas story is, and that it's about Jesus Christ and the birth of our Savior, or something else that's been on my heart, is that Jesus is the answer for the world today. That's right. Whatever you see going on in the turmoil and the anxiety, Jesus is still the answer. He's the author, the finisher of our faith. And you know what? He loves you. And he knows exactly what you're going through today. Whatever circumstance it is, just call out to Jesus. If you need someone to pray with you, we're honored to do that. Call the station 505-884-8355, extension 101. We'll pick up and pray with you. Thank you for being with us today.